We move now to another industry perspective. This time it's Ion Q, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Niccolo Damasi, uh, who is chairman and CEO of Ion Q, who is one of the pioneers in quantum computing, networking, and now sensing also. So all three, uh, where they have uh, great input and work. Under his leadership, INQ has emerged as a front runner in developing commercial quantum hardware that's transforming industries across sectors, from finance to pharmaceuticals to cybersecurity. And with a background in both technology and business, Niccolo brings a unique perspective on how quantum computing is not just a scientific breakthrough, but also a powerful tool for creating new business opportunities and solving complex real world problems. His leadership at INQ is shaping the future of quantum computing. It's driving integration into the marketplace, and it's unlocking value for industries worldwide. Niccolo also received his BA and his Master's of Science degrees in physics from Cambridge University, where he, hear this, he specialized in quantum mechanics and next generation electron beam lithography. Um, while known for his business acumen and leadership, we're doubly pleased to see his heritage in quantum mechanics, uh, providing a strong uh, foundation for his business success. Please join me in welcoming Niccolo Damasi. All right, hello everyone. All hear me okay? I have apparently 17 minutes and 45 seconds. And I'm going to use that time to, uh, to give us all a little bit of perspective on where I and Q has come from, where we are, and where we're going. I'm not going to read the cautionary notes. You guys could have read them at our analyst day on Friday if you're really into it. Um, first of all, let me start with a big thank you to all of you as our customers and partners who have trusted us not just recently, but for many years and the better part of a decade since our machines first powered on. Uh, we have our friends at the University of Maryland, of course, hosting us uh, and the Governor Moore. We have our friends uh, from Korea and KISTE and, uh, and Megazone. We have friends from NVIDIA who we have done groundbreaking work with this year on things like 20x speedups in partnership with Amazon Web Services and AstraZeneca. And we have, frankly, you know, uh, some of our better friends on both sides of the aisle are companies like uh, EPB. Uh, Electric Power, Power Board of Tennessee has done remarkable groundbreaking work with INQ this year on both quantum networking and quantum computing. And their base, the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga, uh, has been a remarkable springboard for moving forward, not just uh, the, their state, but also, frankly, the national quantum scene. <clears throat> I'm going to move forward and talk a bit about where INQ has spent the last few months. Uh, many of you know that uh, in some ways uh, I, I have been at least the, the godfather of our sector in the public markets. Uh, it was my SPAC that took INQ public in 2020. And I recently took over the last nine months as, as chairman and CEO of a business I deeply care about that I have followed for 27 years, if you will, ever since many of us can probably remember Dr. Chris Monroe's seminal work in the mid-90s. Um, inspiration for all of us, and Dr. Monroe has been, in many ways, the, the godfather of, of our entire sector in the public markets. Now, the last 10 years has been a whirlwind for INQ. Our machines powered on in 2017. Our machines made it to the public cloud in 2020. We were very proud of the fact that we were on all three public clouds by the time our IPO closed. The last few years, we have spent advancing our early lead in commercialization and our technical roadmap. And this year has been marked by quantum commercial advantage examples, both with ANSYS, AstraZeneca, and a number of large language models that we, we, where we've been able to demonstrate clear speedups sometimes hundreds of times faster than classical alternatives, but certainly turning a month of work into a day or day and a half is quantum advantage. And that was on last year's INQ Forte system, if you will, uh, that we proved out in the lab last year and we're shipping this year. In a few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about our new system that we unveiled in the lab last week and will, of course, be shipping next year. Now, as I look at 
what we've been up to this year, uh, all of you have seen us make big strides. And we've made big strides not just in computing, but also big strides in networking and big strides in sensing just this morning. We've been building out a broad portfolio of quantum solutions so that we can provide our customers with a one-stop shop. Our ambition absolutely is to be the prevailing technical roadmap in every single one of our product families, the prevailing commercialization partner. And at the end of the day, we are in this to be the 800-pound gorilla of the business of quantum, which many of you hear me talk about. We've done this by combining forces. Just this morning, we announced that we closed our acquisition of Oxford Ionics, and you've seen us make other moves with partners like LightSync to ensure that our scalability is not just in the 2020s, but into the 2030s. And no matter how far quantum computing is going to push itself, we will always be at the forefront. We picked a great path. We doubled down on that path. And we are unlocking all of the engineering challenges we need to continue to prevail. Raised a billion four this year, rang the bell on Friday. And on Friday, the NYC, on our analyst day, we also announced that our new machine, our AQ64 100 qubit machine, is something like a 36 quadrillion times bigger compute space than we believe our competitors' machines can offer. So we consider ourselves the leader in quantum computing and the leader in quantum networking. And everything we do reinforces this moat. When you look at our quantum computing systems, well, we've been selling them for a while. right? We've been selling systems for five generations, if you go back to 2017, we powered on. And we've already mapped out the next five generations, henceforth. And we'll be shipping systems pretty much every other year as we prove things out in the lab. We move them rapidly through engineering validation and into manufacturing. We've also built out our cloud stack, our software stack, and we're super focused on real world commercial applications and real world commercial advantage. So I thank all of our partners who have been there with us, not just the IPO, but also are with us here today. When I roll forward and look at where INQ is going, we're going to keep building systems that are low space, low power, low cost. Right? Quite remarkably, we announced on Friday, as validated by AT Kearney, a global supply chain uh, firm par excellence when it comes to things like should cost and cost of goods sold, we validated a bill of materials for our 2 million qubit fully fault tolerant system in 2030 with 80,000 logical qubits that is under $30 million in 2025 dollars. That is an amazing achievement. And we are deeply proud of what INQ plus Oxford Onyx plus LightSync offers our customers on a scalability perspective. So you're going to get the most logical qubits by a mile. You're going to get the cheapest logical qubits. And that is what it takes in our mind to make quantum computing a mass market reality. Computing revolutions are always about unit economics, miniaturization, and of course, increasing power. And what you get with the INQ ecosystem is exactly that. Most qubits, lowest power, lowest space. I talked a bit about our AQ64 system. We'll be shipping this. The benchmarks are astonishing. I don't think I've seen a 36 quadrillion number before. Uh, in any corporate presentation uh, in my 14 public companies that I've been chairman or CEO, lead director of. We are immensely proud of this, and I congratulate our entire team for their tireless work in delivering this five months early. Because INQ is a company that does what it says it's going to do. We keep our commitments. We've been a public company most of our commercial life. We set expectations so that they can be met and beaten. And we have done that for the last four or five years not just on our technical roadmap, but of course also on our revenue roadmap. This is my friend Chris Balance ringing the bell on Friday with me at the NYSE. And we are deeply proud to have talent pools not only at the University of Maryland, but in fantastic places like Harvard with Lysink and of course outside Oxford University with Oxford Ionics. This is what our roadmap looks like. We published this on June 9th. Our computing roadmap was published on June 9th, and we talked about our pathway to 80,000 logical qubits and 2 million physical qubits. 
We're doing that because we have incredible fidelity and incredibly low error rates and because our machines powered on eight years ago and we've been 30 years in the making. Believe it or not, we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna power on well into the 2030s with uh, our photonic interconnects able to get that logical qubit number someday as high as our physical qubit number. What does this look like from a competitive landscape perspective? Well, some of you probably have seen this since June 9th on our investor website. We believe we're already in the era of early commercial advantage. And IBM's position, Quantinium's position, INQ's position that's been publicly stated looks something like this when you scroll forward. We believe that we will be the first player in the era of broad commercial advantage, and we will have years to build our customer ecosystem delivering broad quantum advantage. Because our machines turned on eight years ago, we've been working on applications a long time. And we announced some of those partnerships that are not classified. Of course, we can't announce a number of them. But we have published a robust application roadmap that I'm not going to run through in detail here. But nevertheless, it's safe to say um, that every area of applied science is going to be and is already being positively impacted by INQ's machines. And we're doing that both privately, on-prem, we're doing that through the cloud. I think it's also safe to say that the majority of value in computing revolutions is not identified three or four or five years up front. It is driven by emergent upside and discovery, and we think a lot's gonna come around the quantum ML and quantum AI and large language model partnerships that we've also pioneered and demonstrated speed ups on this year. Now let me spend a couple of minutes on our quantum networking business, which is growing rapidly, very exciting, very important, not just for this conference and for this state, but for our government, our national security, and ultimately our national economic security. Cybersecurity is a big problem. I think everybody accepts that cybersecurity and getting hacked is something that we can, we're concerned about as individuals and we're concerned about as corporate leaders, as business owners, and of course, as our federal government. Today, we are unfortunately vulnerable to nation state actors who are capturing now, downloading now to decrypt later, as the expression goes. And we're also just vulnerable to classical cybersecurity threats. INQ is working feverishly to address this. And we have made sizable investments in quantum key distribution through acquisitions like ID Quantique and our friends in Geneva who are here today, and doubling down on that both organically and up into space with moves like our acquisition of Capella. Capella gives INQ the capability to build not only the world's first QKD network in space, but the first that is connected to the ground. So we can offer our commercial customers secure communications, ground to ground, ground to space, space to space, and space to ground. And that secure communication capability is not only valuable if you're a large bank or a large telco, but of course, it's a large sovereign capability as well. The future is going to involve probably QKD and PQC, but you're gonna need QKD because as my friend and colleague Marco Pistori always points out to me, it is the only path forward to make sure that our information is not just practically secure, but theoretically secure. Only QKD is theoretically secure. It is not breakable even in 50 years if somebody wants to download now and hope to decrypt in the future. So the world is gonna to move to a quantum internet. And we're very focused on that quantum internet future with partners like AFRL. Now we've unlocked a new milestone very recently. We talked a bit about it at our earnings call uh, last quarter. Um, and we're deeply proud of our collaboration with approximately a $100 million contract we have with the Air Force Research Lab in Rome, New York. And we are doing groundbreaking stuff there. It is not just quantum computing, but it's network quantum computing, and it's proving that we can put our quantum network on a standard fiber optic cable and fiber optic network. We've shown that the future is going to run through the quantum internet, and the quantum internet runs through INQ. Our friends at EPB, I talked a little bit about at the start. They have a quantum network. They have a quantum computer from us. It's the first commercial US quantum computing and networking hub that's ever been built by a very forward-thinking CEO, David Wade, and his team who built the fastest fiber optic cable network and now are following suit in leading the US and his state forward 
in both quantum computing and quantum networking. And we're building a commercial hub to develop things that are important to the state, important electric power of Tennessee, such as grid optimizations. Already making fantastic progress there that we announced just a few weeks ago. This morning, some of you saw uh, that in addition to closing Oxfrionics, uh, we've been busy in the sensing space. And I'm delighted to announce that we uh, are on the path to acquire a business called Vector Atomic in California. Uh, it is a very exciting addition for our networking business. It's a very exciting business addition that will support our space uh, quantum initiative. It's very important for even elements of our computing scalability and expansion down the line. Sensing, as many of you know, is very much a necessity and it is something that is here today. Everybody cares about positioning, navigation, and time, not just in our three-letter agencies in the US and in the Five Eyes and in NATO, but they care about the fact that you can do things like discover rare earths and discover new oil fields, and it ultimately, most of modern civilization breaks down if you don't have an unhackable GPS when a conflict starts. So INQ is very proud of the fact that with the addition of Vector Atomics, we now have the most complete quantum platform in the world. We have over 1,000 patents, about 1,100. We've got a similar number of employees around the world at the rate that we're growing. Vector Atomics already had $200 million of government grants, a fantastic set of technology, a fantastic team, and a fantastic set of patents. And these three or four business pillars, if you will, between space and computing and networking and sensing gives INQ the ability to land and expand with all of our customers. And land and expand not just in the state of Maryland, not just with our federal government, but with the Five Eyes, with the EU, with NATO, and beyond. And we're deeply proud of the fact that we have so many amazing physicist entrepreneurs at this company who recognize that together we are stronger. We are going to win in our verticals. We're going to win by connecting our verticals together and offering solutions that nobody else in the world can even fathom. It is a moat that we're deeply proud of, and we're just starting to build. But these cogs are going to spin faster and faster as INQ's momentum gets building. We're going to deliver continued quantum advantage, more powerful machines, quantum networking ubiquity, quantum sensing ubiquity. And I'm going to finish where I started today, which is by thanking all of you as our partners and customers. There are many of you in the audience that I hope someday will work with us, if you haven't already. Many of you that I hope might even work at INQ. Please come and find us. We are making a home for researchers, engineers, go-to-market professionals, and people that want to build the best and brightest quantum career that one can. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your conference. I will see you outside.